on Netflix, I watched from 1999, The Iron Giant. This is a traditional animated film, though a number of effects, along with the Iron Giant itself, uh, are highly assisted with CGI. Uh, but it's not CGI in the vein of, say, Toy Story. It's more like CG in the vein of that, that big tractor thing that was chasing the, the kid in uh, The Rescuers Down Under. So I hadn't seen this movie before, and I liked it, though I can understand kind of how it bombed at the box office. Uh, th this was right before everybody started to have a computer animated film for kids. And I'm not so sure this is for kids so much as for their parents. And sometimes it feels like when you get the audience mismatched like this, you can make a good movie and you'll have a cult following, but it may bomb at the box office. It also doesn't help that this very much apes E.T. the extraterrestrial. So there's this kid, Hobarth. Hogarth? Hogarth? Hobarth? Ho... I'm gonna call him Hughes. That's his last name. Anyways, he's a, he's a very talkative, rambunctious kid. Uh, kind of keeps to himself, doesn't have a lot of friends his age. Well, this uh, satellite thing crashes in the ocean uh, off the coast of where he lives, scares some guy in his fishing boat, and then makes its way to land. Uh, this kid's uh, mom, Jennifer Aniston, she has a, a, a like night shift at this cafe and uh, Hughes uh, it just kind of causes her problems he's supposed to stay home he, he's supposed to go to bed at 8 o'clock when he watches scary movies Hughes uh, loses the uh, connection from the TV antenna goes and has a look about that and learns that the Iron Giant ate the antenna he tracks this thing down this hundred foot tall metal creature uh, he finds that it's it's going around eating metal it got, comes to this power station gets tangled up in some cords is getting shocked Hughes jumps in hits the giant off switch that would not exist in reality the creature recognizes it saved him and now it's basically his pet so it's like Transformers well uh, Jennifer Aniston really doesn't have a whole lot to do here. She's just kind of like off most of the time. There's this guy in her cafe that Hughes was heckling. Well, kind of not. I mean, he, he seemed like a kind of cool beatnik sort of guy slash bar biker. He he has this junkyard where he makes metal sculptures, and he sees the giant, freaks out a bit, but Hughes is able to talk him into letting the giant stay there because there's government G-men play by voiced by Shooter McGaver, who is after the giant. Uh, he, he seems to be the, uh, I, would, I guess we could call him the antagonist. I mean, at first I was kind of on the fence about it, but then you see the cowardice in which he acts at the end. But he wants this thing destroyed. He has the army on his side, played by Frazier's dad as a general. And uh, he, he's trying to track down this creature ends up staying at Jennifer Aniston's house. There's really no mention about Hughes's dad here. You know, we had the single mom, but I would have liked a little more character development between mom and son here. Because we never really get the big cheer jerk, tear jerker type moment. Even, I mean, even if you didn't really like E.T. so much, you can definitely see how that has an advantage over this. Because this mostly keeps it light and fun. Except for a missile crisis at the end. But even then, you really don't feel like there's too much to worry about. Well, uh, the metal creature, Beatnik, and Hughes hang out, do stuff in the woods. Eventually, some information gets out that in the Shooter McGavin goes to check out the junkyard. And, they, and the Beatnik's like, oh, you want to see Metal Giant? Okay, here he is. Look, I made the sculpture. They just kind of posed him. And it's like, oh, you waste all of our time, Shira McGavin, all this stuff. Well, um, I'm trying to remember what caused the giant to leave the area. 
I think he, he realized he was dangerous. When they pointed like a fake toy laser at him, he started turning on real lasers. He couldn't control himself. He didn't want to hurt Hughes. So he ended up kind of bolting and the uh, and he saved some kids that were falling off a bridge. The military still wants him out. They've got like all these vehicles showing up. There's battleships like offshore getting ready to bombard them, everything. Uh, Hughes' mom, the kid, and the beatnik catch up with all of this, and they're all basically being quarantined at this uh, little town where an airstrike has just been called in by uh, Shooter McGavin against the orders of everybody, but the missile's coming. He had lied, said that the giant killed the kid, but no, it's, it, it's keeping Hughes safe, so, yep. He, and he couldn't even leave. They tried to get him a jeep and they crashed him and like make sure he stays like a good soldier. Ballistics missile goes up in the sky. Hughes has been explaining to the giant uh, death and things like they saw this deer in the woods and it got shot. And he's talking, you know, we got this guns are bad, guns are kill thing going in here. He explains this type of thing to the giant. Uh, tells him that this missile's coming and they're all going to die. So the giant's like, no, I got this. And the giant's voiced by Vin Diesel before Vin Diesel blew up. He was in Saving Private Ryan, but that's probably really the only place you'd seen him at this time. So he flies up into space, collides with the missile, blows up. Everybody believes that the giant saved them. Now there's a sculpture there by uh, uh, the beatnik, who evidently is now with, dating at least, Jennifer Aniston. So you see that they built their family, and they all missed the giant. And uh, we learned earlier that when the giant gets like disassembled, it has this ability to kind of like Bluetooth its way together. These like uh, blinking lights come on and the pieces attract. And there was this bolt that was found that was uh, delivered from the army to Hughes. And it's like, hey, this is the only thing we could find of him. Take it. And then later that night, it comes alive. And it starts going down, the, down to the forest. He's like, go get him. He, he realizes it's putting itself back together. So like E.T., the government comes in, wants the thing destroyed. Though E.T., they don't really want to destroy him. They end up getting him killed. Iron Giant gets killed. E.T. comes back to life. Iron Giant comes back to life. It's being assembled up at like the North Pole at the end of the movie. No sequel, made half as much as its budget. It's kind of a shame because this is the sort of movie that adults could have really enjoyed, and I think they do now, and even the kids that saw it then, now adults, probably realize the same. It's very good to look at. I mean, it's nice seeing a traditional animation film. Uh, there's a certain charm to that that's sorely missed. Uh, you know, I kind of think it could have used some improvement in the character building, but uh, overall I give the Iron Giant 3 out of 4 stars.